Hello friends and enemies. I'm at, uh, I forget what the location is called. But, uh, this is near the, this art museum is over there and the science museum is over that way, I believe. I forget the name of the lake. But I did a video here on this little hill about eight or so months ago more or less and so now I'm going to I think when I did it it, it was uh, in Spanish but this time I'm gonna uh, read up continue reading I'm not sure if I got the exact place where I left off but it's the book is called Buddha and the Gospel of Buddhism by Kumara Swami. That's Ananda Kentish Kumara Swami. That's spelled C O O M A R A S W A M Y. He lived from 1877 to 1947, and he was uh, pretty important. In, uh, he wasn't like an expert on Buddhism. He was more like an expert on on all kinds of things about India, Indian art and Indian mysticism. So that would include Buddhism. Mm, he was considered like a a perennial philosopher. Okay. So he wrote a book called Buddha and the Gospel of Buddhism. I think it was written in 1910, in that decade. Uh, you got a, a version of that book from 1965 or so. And I, got, I found an online version at archive.org because I don't have the book with me. So I'm going to read uh, something more or less where I left off. I think I left off where uh, I skipped around a lot too. Uh, the four signs I, I, I may have already read. The four signs that includes uh, uh, seeing uh, an old man, seeing uh, a sick man or person, and seeing uh, the uh, funeral service for someone that died and they had she, he probably saw the corpse and when they were taking the corpse to be um, in this case in India they would probably have cremated that corpse and he saw the wailing of the people of their family and friends so so those three uh, three events uh, affected his mind he didn't see them all at once he saw them on three different occasions and then he saw on a fourth occasion, uh, a, happy, a happy person, and it happened to be a a bhikkhu, or um, what we would call a monk, or a swami, or a sannyasin, or different names for it. Uh, could have been a wandering hermit, or whatever, and uh, or it could have been a yogi. And so he said, "Hey, that's what I'm going to try." This looks like it'll make me happy and and it'll uh, liberate me from death and sickness and old age. Well, maybe it didn't really, but maybe uh, the the suffering caused by them. So then, uh, so let's assume that we read that. I think we, we did. Mm -hmm. What's the next section called? Oh shit, I touched it and it went to an... I don't know how to handle this. Let's see what the great... Yeah, maybe we're at the Great Renunciation. See, because he... He... Oh, is this working still? Yeah. How's it look? I got a few, uh, few uh, percentages left, so I gotta hurry. So he finished off saying that... Uh, it is to when he saw the uh, fourth sign I think oh no 
Oh no, that's something else. Saying that Yasodara, his wife, was crying, and and he told her, "You need not fear it. It is to the good and the worthy alone that such dreams come." Oh, because she had a dream uh, predicting uh, some horrible things, but they weren't horrible. He says that you should rejoice. See, for the Purport of all these dreams is that the bond of mortality shall be loosed. Oh shit. The veils of ignorance shall be rent asunder. Mm, and for I have completely fulfilled the wish, the way of wisdom, and everyone that has faith in me shall be saved from the three evils without exception. He's kind of looking into the future, I guess. Or he's already made a commitment. Hmm. Because he says, because when he found, uh, he saw the bhikkhu, a religious who had abandoned all longings and leading a life of austerity, living without passion or envy and begging for his daily food, he said, that is well done and makes me eager for the same course of life. To become religious has ever been praised by the wise and this shall be my refuge and the refuge of others and shall yield the fruit of life and immortality. So he's determined to, to become a bhikkhu, you could say, or renounce his palace life. So now uh, we're in the... Next section, uh, the Great Renunciation. The Bodhisattva reflected that he ought not to go forth as a wanderer without giving notice to his father. And therefore he sought the king by night and said, Sire, the time is at hand for my going forth. Do not hinder me, but permit me to depart. The king's eyes were charged with tears and he answered what is there needful to change thy purpose tell me whatever thou desirest it shall be thine be it myself the palace or the kingdom the bodhisattva replied sire I desire four things pray thee grant them the first to remain forever in possession of the fresh color of youth. The second, that sickness may never attack me. The third, that my life may have no term. And the last, that I may not be subject to decay. Hmm. Those are impossible demands when the king heard these words he was overcome by grief for the prince desired what it was not possible for a man to bestow then the bodhisattva continued if then I cannot avoid old age sickness death and decay grant at least this one thing that when I leave this world, I may never more be subject to rebirth. And when the king could give no better answer, he granted his son's desire. But the next day he established an additional guard of 500 young men of the Shakyas at each of the four gates of the palace. Mm. He locked them up while the Matron Gautami established an Amazon guard within. For the king would not allow his son to depart with a free will. <gasps> He's not going to let him get out. He put how many guards? An additional guard of 500 young men of the Shakyas. To each of the four gates. So a 500 times 4 
is 2000. Holy free holy. At the same time, the captains of the Yakas assembled together and they said, What are Yakas? Nature spirits. They said, Today, my friends, the Bodhisattva is to go forth. Hasten to do him service. <gasps> He's got Yakas on his side. They're going to get him out. <clears throat> and not only that, Wait a minute. Not only that, the four great kings, those are guardians of the four quarters, commanded the Yakas to bear up the feet of the prince's horse. The 33 Devas likewise assembled, and Shaka ordered their services so that one should cast a heavy sleep on all the men and women and young men and maidens of Kapilavastu. And another should silence the noise of the elephants, horses, camels, bulls, and other beasts. And other constituted themselves an escort to cast down a rain of flowers and perfume the air. Shaka himself announced that he would open the gates and show the way. Holy free holy. What's going on? 33 Davis and Shaka ordered their services. So they cast a heavy sleep on all the men and women and young men and maidens of Kapalibastu. Kapalibastu. Kap Kapilavastu. I'm not sure if Kapilavastu was was a. Uh...